Hey guys, this is Paul Bartholomew again, and in this tutorial we're going to go over metadata, or well, organization and metadata um, for your stock footage. And we'll just start off with some basic organization. Um, right here I have some events that I have made stock footage from. Some farm stuff, and then I did some more farm stuff later, so I call it farm too, pretty simple. The PMB that you see at the beginning is just my initials. The way I organize this is I try to keep this name pretty simple and tack it on to the beginning of my clips. There's a few reasons for that. It's very easy to find those clips later on. If you can do that, I recommend it. If not, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. You can name these things whatever you want. You can leave just the MVI underscore 4013. That's totally fine. But as you can see here, I have them in a folder called HD. The reason for that is because I shoot some 4K stuff. So as you can see, I have 4K versions and HD versions. Of course, this HD folder has a lot more shots in it also, but I want to make sure that I have both those versions. Other than that, let's go into metadata. Um, so what I use for metadata is this right here. I actually use just my Google Docs. You can use Microsoft Word or Excel. You can use anything you want to do your metadata as long as it keeps it organized for you. This is just how I do it. Google Docs is free. It's on my phone. It's on my computer. I really like it. When it comes to metadata, the main thing that you want to keep track of is your clip name and over here, tags. Those are the two most important things, I think. As you can see here, I have my clip name, and it just says pmb-farm- and the clip name. That way, I can always tie it back to the raw clip that I got out of my camera, the original. And here in tags, that's the most important thing is you can see there's a lot of information in there. Well, you want to keep track of that because that's like the, the bulk of all the work that goes into doing metadata. Now these tags, these tags need to be descriptive. Some of mine aren't the best. Uh, I'll admit I'm not the strongest in doing tags, but as you can see here, I have you know things like 30 frames per second, flowers, fly, garden, grass, green, leaves, nature. I have my name, Paul Bartholomew. It's in the west, uh, it's a yellow flower, it's next to vegetables, you know, things like that. Anything that's in that shot, you want to put it inside um, those tags. Actually, let's take a look at that clip. That's PMB, you know, that's the 1707 right there. Well, let's go to that. That's uh, under PMB Farm, yeah. Let's do that one, 1707. It's probably the first one here, yep. And as you can see, there's that clip. It kind of gives a good description of everything that's in that clip. And uh, it's a yellow flower, it's in a garden, you know, all that works out great. There's a fly, <laughs> as you can see. So everything I could do to give information about that shot, well, it's in the metadata. I have a few extra things that I've added here. I actually made a nice title to go with my shot. Because on Pond 5, I don't want to name it that. I want to name it something like Tilting Shot of a Squash Plant. That just works out a little bit better. I also have the description right here. It's a little overkill. I could just use tilting shot of a squash plant, but now I have a tilting up shot of a young squash plant in a vegetable garden. Wow, quite the description. You don't really have to do that, but I thought maybe it'll help. I don't know. Apparently it is, because I'm, I'm making decent money here uh, on Pond5, and I really like Pond5. I also have this column right here, it, HD and 4K. Not all my shots are in HD or in 4K, so I have a HD and 4K versions, and I like to just keep those separate because they're going to have a different item number that Pond5 uh, selects for them, uh, assigns them. So I like to keep track of that also. I like to keep track of the link where that shot is on, on Pond5. Um, so let's go to maybe a cool shot here. So I've got this one right here. This is the uh, 4K nighttime time-lapse of Sand Mountain. Pretty neat shot. Um, it's in 4K. It's also in HD, right there. And I can go ahead and I can see, oh, how much I listed it for. I, I recommend putting your prices there. I have all my tags, of course. That's the most important thing. And then right here, that's what's link on Pond5. Works great. Brings it up, and you can see it. And it previews it and just loops it over and over and over again. And you can see it's in 4K at $150 or HD at $50. Um, I've used this, this one's been sold quite a few times, um, actually not through Pond5, but through another source, and I've gotten a lot of money from this shot. So that's kind of the basics of doing metadata for stock footage. 
um, you definitely want the clip name. If you're going to title it, which I highly recommend, also put a title. You can do a description. You can do its quality or its uh, HD or 4K. You can make sure you can do quality here. Um, I like to keep track of the price that I have it set at at the, the time this time because it, that could change in the future. It might change them all at once. Tags. That's the most important, most cumbersome part of doing metadata. It, just, it takes forever sometimes. But once you get going on it, as you can see here, a lot of these are really the almost the same. So they start off, and I go 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second, Bartholomew. You know, I can go through there, and then I copy and paste it to the next one. And then I just change a few of the last uh, tags that I put in there. Oh, tags. Make sure you just put your tag and then comma, space, and do the next one. And that's how most sites are going to keep track of those. It'll even work on YouTube. It doesn't matter. You can use it on... That's how... That's kind of the the norm. That's how it works. Um, but yeah, and then the pond 5 link, I like to keep track of that, and the item number. Um, over here on the very right, I have a YouTube link that kind of links it onto YouTube. And so all my shots are also on YouTube. That way people can look them up there and be like, oh, cool, I like that shot, and just send them right over to Pond5. It just gets helps you get a little more notice online. But yeah, that's the basics of doing metadata. Um, good luck with that. If you have any suggestions or questions, make sure you put them in the comment section below. Um, I'll try and get back to those as fast as I can. And yeah, thanks for listening. Bye.